All right, Michigan, Michigan State. This is another one of those great football games that we see every year. And what fun this one is. I don't know if it's going to be that fun this year. However, Michigan State usually plays well against Michigan and has Jim Harbaugh's number in the past. For some reason, Michigan's a a 23-point favorite in this football game. As much as Michigan State has had their woes this year, and we've definitely tracked them throughout this this show here on Slasher U, um, and we've definitely heard some thoughts for the Michigan State faithful, I, I don't think Michigan State, is going to lose by 23 points to their in-state rival. I mean, we have seen some some of the best games of the year in college football seasons past when in the Michigan versus Michigan State football game. I don't know if Michigan State can get it done against this Michigan team. I think this Michigan team is a very special one, but by no means do I think they, they lose by over three scores, Steve. The only way that Michigan State stays in this game and covers the spread is if Tom Izzo is invited into the locker room, he somehow converts his two, three zone schemes into a defensive scheme that can slow Michigan down. That's the only way (laughs) that this game stays this close. I mean, we already are hated by Michigan state fans here. um, And you're just making it worse. (laughs) Well, well, you know, those Mel Turner lovers, um, this is the Mel Turner Bowl, Michigan, Michigan State. Now we 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 have now renamed it. Forget the Paul Bunyan Trophy. Oh, this man. is the Mel Turner Bowl. In case you were wondering what we're talking about, we made a mistake of calling Mel Tucker Mel Turner, but yeah, it you could just be a hundred comments on this page. Right it, it, but you know what? It, it might as well be melatonin because it it really doesn't matter. <laughs> okay, okay, uh, you know Mel Tucker's mercenary approach at Michigan State is kind of catching up with them here this year. Now, I'm not saying that next year, especially if they can capitalize on the transfer portal, that Michigan State can't try to right the ship a little bit. But I think Michigan State's coming back more to the pack. And we're having, you know, really just two elite teams in the Big Ten. And Penn State's kind of like in the hunt kind of there. I think Illinois has certainly been a great story. But sure. Michigan State's coming back to the pack a little bit, and th- this is just not this is just not a good matchup. It's not a good matchup on paper. It's not a good matchup timing wise. It, mm-hmm. It's Michigan can run the ball with anybody. Yeah, no, they definitely can. And when you look at this Michigan State offense, I really thought that it was going to be a lot better this year. I mean, when yes. we talked about the the preseason, when we talked about the thoughts on this this conference. I mean, obviously I had high hopes for Michigan state after what we saw last year, Peyton Thorne has not done that. I mean, his, his last name is exactly what it is. It's been a thorn in the side of the Spartans for the entire season. And we thought we were going to have this amazing running game with Michigan state and Berger and company has just not done that. And I don't know if it's all his fault. I think there's obviously some awesome offensive line woes. And then the defense, especially the secondary, has been an absolute nightmare for this team. I still don't think they lose by that much. It could be close. Um, but if I'm playing this bet, I'm going to take Michigan State with the points. I think Michigan takes care of it handily. J.J. McCarthy, another one of these games for them that you can decide and see, can he manage the game? We saw it at him against Iowa. A lot of people had questions. Can he handle that defense and and take care of it? He did. I don't think this Michigan State defense is even remotely close to an Iowa defense. If he can handle it, if he can get the run game going, Blake Corum, obviously a Heisman hopeful. I think Michigan takes care of this. Harbaugh finally gets gets some nice recognition, some nice respect against Michigan State. They moved to eight. No, that's my thoughts on this one. And then we get another thought process here. If we have an Ohio State win and a Michigan win, we just get to keep building that momentum about maybe two battles of the unbeatens at the end of the year. And then really, honestly, I'm, I'm taking that to be the winner of that goes to the college football playoffs to represent yeah. the big 10. The only thing that concerns me in this game, as far as betting and the spreads go, is that Michigan's got to stop with the penalties. They, they, you know, I mean, they are just, I don't think they're the, the most penalized team in FBS, but they've got to be, close. I mean, I mean, they just got to stop making, uh, and a lot of them are foolish penalties. Mm-hmm. So from that standpoint, I can see 
because it's just such a big rivalry game and everybody is so psyched. Michigan State does some yapping. Michigan State gets Michigan to be too emotional in this, and those penalties end up stalling drives or giving Michigan State opportunities for yep. some easy points. But I'm again um, calling Tom Izzo. Uh, please report to the stadium. You're the only hope for the Spartans this week. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, we saw emotions rise at, at halftime in the tunnel between Penn State and Michigan. I'm sure emotions are going to be high between Michigan and Michigan State. We got someone joining in. Drixley, our good old friend of the show. Melatonin Bowl is better. <laughs> laugh out loud. So, I mean, that's a good one. Melatonin Bowl. Um, even our even the people commenting in are going to get us get us uh, canceled by the Michigan State faithful, but that's okay. 